I would like to make a public service announcement that I have no plans on committing suicide. What's up guys, Fooch from Fooch TV here. Now about two weeks ago, a buddy of mine sent me a YouTube video about a YouTuber who reported about how a drug kingpin located in the Philippines had been arrested. This guy was known for murdering three Koreans in the Philippines beforehand, and now he was arrested as this giant uh, drug kingpin. And with that story, the image of this beautiful, relatively young woman, Huang Hana, came out. And, you know, I was curious about what her tie to the story was. So I did some digging and I kind of found a lot, a whole lot, so much that I will now be making a three part mini series about drugs in Korea. The first one being about Huang Hana. The second one, yes, I'm finally going to do it, is going to be about burning sun. I know some people have requested that for a while now. That's going to be part two in the series. And then part three will be about the drug kingpin himself. Now, without further ado, let's talk about Huang Hana, who I'm calling the Dairy Queen. Now, why am I calling her the Dairy Queen? Well, she is none other than the granddaughter of the chair of Namyong Dairy, one of the largest dairy companies located here in South Korea. Now, our story begins about 10 years ago when Huang Hana was actually deported from the US while she was studying abroad for allegedly doing drugs. Now, there are some conflicting reports. I read somewhere that she was deported from Los Angeles, and I read elsewhere that she was deported from Las Vegas for doing drugs. I mean, honestly, I don't know how you can get deported from Vegas for doing drugs. Vegas is known for people doing drugs. It's practically encouraged. The only thing I can imagine if it was from Vegas, if she was doing something really stupid, like, driving under the influence or doing drugs in public or I, I don't know what the hell she was doing even in LA there are a lot of people on drugs so unless you're doing something incredibly reckless I don't know how you would get caught however she got caught and she was deported sent back to Korea and charges were pressed against her and she was put on probation now if you're asking why were charges pressed upon her in korea even though she was caught in the u.s that's because of korea's crazy drug law which i might be making a, a supplement video talking about that but essentially koreans who go to another country and do drugs in that country even if it was a legal drug so if she went to los angeles where it is now legal to smoke marijuana and she smokes marijuana and comes back to Korea, that is illegal. And if for whatever reason she gets drug tested, she can get arrested. Now, so she got in trouble in 2011 and then she came out in the news again in 2015. Now she was arrested in 2015 for selling drugs to and taking drugs with a college student, 26 year old with the surname of Cho. Now, for some reason, charges were dropped against Huang despite having her name mentioned multiple times in the investigation by Cho. However, Huang received no prison sentence and Cho received a two and a half year prison sentence. Although requests for drug testing were made by the police, prosecutors dropped it without any known reason. Now, as a side note, the drug they were doing is meth. Now, I'm not saying I've done drugs before, I'm not saying that. My personal drug stance is I'm libertarian, you know, my body, my choice, I should be able to do whatever I want with my body as long as it doesn't affect others, kind of like the abortion pro-choice argument, but I, that's a whole nother story. I do believe that drugs should be legalized, but I am, I do realize that there are some good drugs and there are some bad drugs. Now, if you're completely anti-drug, you're ignorant to the whole drug scene, then yes, you would think all drugs are bad. However, there are some good drugs that are relatively safe for you and some really bad drugs. And meth is a really bad drug. Now, as far as I was aware of, the only way to take meth would be to smoke it. However, for some reason, Huang and Cho were injecting meth into them, which is something that uh, I don't know why anyone would want to do that. I don't want to inject myself with anything. 
But anyway, that's if you were curious, that's the way they were ingesting it. Now apparently it came out of the news that despite reports of Cho being asked to give a statement about her relationship with Huang and whether or not Huang did the drugs or not, Cho remained silent and apparently it's knowledge, uh, I don't have, I don't know how, why this is public knowledge, how it became public knowledge, but it is public knowledge that Huang had given Cho a hundred million won, which is about a hundred thousand dollars to keep quiet during the investigation and henceforth. The reason for the payout was because Huang was already prosecuted for drug usage back in 2011, so if she was caught with drugs again, she would almost certainly get arrested. Now here's where things get a little bit interesting because Cho is not a random girl. Cho was actually dating someone named Yi Mo Hoon, and if you don't know who that is, which I didn't know before researching this video, he's actually the owner of Burning Sun. That's right, the owner of Burning Sun. They were dating back in 2011, Cho and Yi Mo Hoon, and they even appeared on TV together back in 2011. Now, due to Korea's absolutely insane medieval defamation laws, even though I was able to find Cho's real and full name, and even though I have pictures of her because she was on TV, I'm hesitant and even scared to show those pictures and mention her full name because there is a chance that I can get sued, even though she was on TV. So Huang was able to stay out of the news for a couple of years until 2019. Now I should say that she stayed out of the news for drug reasons, however I believe she was in the news I think in 2017 or 2018 by beginning a relationship with Pak Yun Chun, who is a previous K-pop star, member of such groups as JYJ and TVXQ. Now on April 4th, 2019, Huang was hospitalized for some reason, I think it was a drug overdose, because during that hospitalization, police found drugs in her system, and I don't know why they would test for drugs unless they didn't know the cause, or because they knew that she must have been on drugs. Now the drugs were believed to be sent from LA via courier in ramen packages, because apparently the silver, you know in the ramen packages, they're kind of like that, that foily, silvery material that's encompassing them. That material, at least at the time that it was done, is hard for the drug x-ray scanners to go through, therefore it's hard to determine what's actually in the packages, and according to sources, that is how the drugs were sent to Korea. An informant claims Huang was sent drugs from LA by her family, that Korean American, oh, and that Korean Americans are getting into drugs. I don't know why that last part was relevant to the informant, but apparently, Korean Americans are getting into drugs. Now Huang dated and was even engaged to Pak Yu Chun until the beginning of 2019 when they broke up. Now police arrested Huang who then gave a statement that she in fact did do drugs except she also did drugs with Pak Yu Chun, completely throwing him under the bus. Now on April 16, 2019, Pak Yu Chun actually tested negative for drugs using the normal test, however police required additional testing of urine and hair samples. Now on April 23rd, 2019, Pak Yu Chun did test positive for drugs and was arrested three days later. During a court trial, he was convicted guilty on July 2nd, but only given two years probation. And if he broke probation by doing drugs, he'd only be given a 10 month prison sentence which is relatively light for a drug user here in Korea. Now on July 19th, 2019, Huang was sentenced to probation and released, saying the typical line of I'll reflect on my behavior and do better, something that Korean celebrities usually say after they get arrested. Prosecutors filed an appeal, but on November 8th, the court dismissed all requests for an appeal, and she was still just put on probation. Now, Huang Hana stayed out of the news again for a little bit over a year until she was brought back into the spotlight. On December 28, 2020, the Yongsan Police Department, located in Seoul, said Huang Hana was under investigation again for breaking her probation and doing drugs. At that time, no arrest warrant was issued. Now here's the point in the story where things start getting a little bit crazy. NBC News Desk 
did a report on TV, which aired January 4th, 2021, so this year. It turns out that in 2020, Huang Hana was dating a guy named Oh Se Young. While they were dating, Huang, Oh, and a friend of Oh's were all doing meth together. In September 2020, the police suspected that Huang was doing drugs again and she was put under investigation. It turns out that she was doing drugs. However, this time, Oh Se Young took the fall. He gave her a police report in September saying that he administered the drug to Huang while she was asleep. The reason he took the fall was because he knew that if Huang got caught for drugs and was actually prosecuted properly this time, she would definitely be going to jail. Now, for some reason, O oh figured that he wouldn't be serving a long jail sentence if he did take the fall, considering this was a first time conviction and he was madly in love with her and on her nuts, so she wanted he wanted to protect her and he thought that she would take care of him while he was in jail. I guess for some period of time, the investigation was still ongoing because no arrests were made and because police were skeptical of the story that somebody could inject accurately and precisely inject somebody else while they were sleeping. You know, it's, you know, even if I'm consciously trying to inject my vein, it's actually quite difficult, let alone doing that to somebody who's sleeping, let alone to that person not waking up. And then they asked him to try to inject something to see his kind of precision and it was terrible. So they, 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 the police doubted the story. Now, even though the arrest had not been made yet, something happened. Again, not all the details are out on this. Something happened where O realized that he was being played by her and then that she had no intention to take care of him. And in fact, that she was just using him. Big surprise. On December 22nd, O contacted an acquaintance, according to the news it was an acquaintance, O contacted an acquaintance and said he was going to the police station to retract his falsified statement and turn in Huang for drug usage. Now here comes the kind of insane part because two days later after O Seyoung spoke to his friend, he committed suicide committed suicide in his house, leaving a note apologizing for bringing Huang Hana into drugs. Oh's friend, who allegedly had done drugs with Huang Hana and Oh Seyoung, who was a key witness in the trial if Oh came forward and said, hey, you know, I didn't inject her while she was sleeping, I lied about it, it was actually her injecting herself and us buying drugs from her. The key witness who did drugs with them, guess what? He was found unconscious due to attempted suicide. Now the acquaintance that O called, who's different from the O's friend, the acquaintance that O called a few days or two days prior saying that he was going to the police station for some reason had rec recorded that call and had submitted it to the news station or the police station, I'm not sure which one, but that's how we have audio of O telling the acquaintance that he will be going to the police station to come forward and say that it was Huang who was actually doing drugs herself. Now, after they found O who committed suicide and O's friend who's unconscious and is in a coma and for God knows how long he'll be there, maybe for the rest of his life, the police immediately ruled out any foul play and said it was definitely suicide. Now, I'm not saying that they were murdered, but... <laughs> I'd also like to make a point, now that I'm making this news story public, even though it's already public, I'm not bringing any new secret evidence to light, I would like to make a public service announcement that I have no plans on committing suicide. I have not been depressed. I love my life. I don't want to kill myself. I have no intention of ever killing myself. So if I suddenly kill myself, then please go to the police, show them this clip of the video, and use that as evidence to show that I may have been murdered to be silenced. There was news conferences after the report that O had committed suicide, and during the news conference, Huang Hana did not show any ounce of remorse at all, and there are even reports of her speaking to some of her friends, seeing if O Seyang had left her in his will. No hint of sadness. Now on January 7, 2021, Huang Hana was arrested for her involvement and her connection with the drug kingpin who was arrested in the Philippines, 
drug king worldwide. More about him and their connections in part three of this video. In part two, I will be covering Burning Sun. Drugs were involved in Burning Sun and you know, call me a conspiracy theorist, but there's no way that this Cho that Huang Hana knew a couple of years ago who happened to be dating the owner of Burning Sun and Burning Sun, if you don't know already, there were cases of girls being drugs and drugs being taken in that club. And now Huang Hana is also connected to a drug kingpin who's arrested in the Philippines. If you ask me, everything is related in some way or another. So catch part two where I do a full and extensive overview of Burning Sun that will have the most up to date and the most accurate information as you've come to know and love here on Fooch TV. Let me know what you think about this story down below or if you have any comments or if you'd like me to cover any other stories, let me know. And if you have any tips or articles you'd like to send me, please feel free to send to my email, foochtv at protonmail.com. As always, if you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, subscribe, unsubscribe. It's all up to you, really. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I'll catch you next time.